Hey, what's going on, guys? It's on your rings. First, I just want to start off this video by saying thank you guys so much for the recent support between my Gears of War videos or my live streams or whatever I might be uploading or streaming. You guys are always supporting me, and I really appreciate it, and I thank you so much for that. So, one thing I wanted to mention really quick before we get into this video is that Gears of War 4 is crossplay. PC and Xbox can play together. I'm mentioning this because I often get a lot of people saying, oh, well, you play on PC, I can't play with you, or can I play with you, oh, wait, you're on PC, or something like that. It's cross-play, you guys can play with me, send me a friend request, my gamertag's right there in the top right corner. <clears throat> friend request me, I'll accept it, and you're welcome to play. I don't play every day, but when I do, I play on stream with viewers, or sometimes I'll just play with random if there is no viewers online, but... As time goes by, I've been getting more and more viewers friending me and wanting to play, so I think from now on it'll almost certainly be viewer-only games, which is good. I prefer to play with people who can, um, you know, listen and, and play correctly. But anyway, let's get into the video. This video is a remake to my full guide that I did a while back. It has almost 7,000 views, so people have definitely been enjoying it, but I made some mistakes in it. And I just want to do a remaster of it, like a 2017 remaster of it. So, a couple corrections first. The fabricator cannot be destroyed. I told you guys that it could be because some guy told me and I believed him because he was a high level. Um, when I first started the game I was gullible, of course. I was a noob. <clears throat> it cannot be destroyed. I've been playing the game since launch and it's never been destroyed for me, ever. So... It can't, it can't be destroyed, don't believe it. 50% of a number is 50%. I remember telling you guys in my scout guide that you should always save up as much power as you can before depositing it, because 50% of a bigger number is going to be a bigger percent. I'm an idiot. 50% is 50%. It doesn't matter. Deposit your money. I would recommend doing it after every wave, so you can be feeling your engineer so he can build stuff. Wiping, as in dying, like your whole team dying and having to restart the last wave, no longer matters in terms of consecutive wave bonus. The bonus is minute now, so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to get a lot of credits for it, but it still does wipe score, so if you're someone who wants to get on the leaderboards, then you're going to want to not wipe. couple tips. Have at least one scout, one engineer. This is pretty basic common sense but you want to have an engineer and a scout if you're gonna plan to get to wave 50 the rest doesn't matter you can have three heavies you can have three snipers you can have three soldiers of course I wouldn't really want to have three snipers unless they're like god snipers that know what they're doing I would definitely want to have at least one soldier or one heavy or something like that because you need someone that can <clears throat> kill faster make sure you're playing your class right and to help with that I do have some tips Oh, and I do want to mention real fast, I am reading from bulletins. I have a notepad up on my second monitor of bulletin points that I wrote down that I can read off of so I don't forget anything because sometimes if I freeball a video, I'll forget stuff. So I do have some bulletins, so if anything sounds scripted, that's because I'm reading from that bulletin. It's still all my tips. It's still genuine. There's nothing fake about it. It just might sound fake, but it's not. Um, <clears throat> so starting with the classes, the engineer, the cards you should use are the efficiency boost, the discounts depending on what items you want to build that game, maybe the sentry cards if you want to use sentries. What I meant by the discounts depending on what items you want to build that game. Um, plan ahead. If you're going to play the engineer that game, take a look at the map and decide what you want to build, where, what your strategy is, and what you're going to be building. So, say you're having a really strong turret defense and maybe a lot of sentries, well then you're obviously going to take turret and sentry discounts. Don't take the health cards. The health cards aren't as good as I thought, and the reason being is in harder difficulties, even in the easier ones, but mostly in harder difficulties, <clears throat> the tactic you'll be using for the most part, if you're playing with skilled players and they know what they're doing, or you're a skilled player yourself, is you'll most likely be building decoys and sentries and stuff, 
mostly decoys and you won't repair them you'll let them blow up you'll have the scout pick the money up and he'll deposit it back into the fabricator with this 50% bonus and then you'll use that money again to make more decoys and stuff you don't really want to be repairing anything so having the health ones isn't gonna help that's just gonna make it take forever to get destroyed health would be good for maybe the turrets because on the December 6th update <clears throat> turrets did receive a health um, reduction so maybe maybe turret health but I wouldn't run anything else health well okay maybe barriers too but not necessarily so much barriers you can also run discounts and just make more of those uh, stay in the base a dead engineer can't repair obviously and um, you just you shouldn't be out on the field that's not your job keep your fortifications repaired some enemies can do massive burst damage to fortifications so before you know it it could be dead some people will like put off repairing something just because they're afraid to spend the money or something next thing they know a DR1 just like starts spraying his overkill at the barrier or something boom it's dead now you're fucked now you gotta build another one keep it repaired don't spam too many fortifications right away in the early waves plan out your power the first five waves of each boss wave meaning 1 to 5 10 to 15 21 to 25 etc etc the first five waves after you kill a boss and of course 1 to 5 the power is kinda low there's not as many enemies they're not as big enemies and you're not going to be getting a lot of power so plan out your power and don't spend it all right away I would keep a small pool around five ish thousand of power for repairing if you have the efficiency boost you should not need to have a lot of power so I'd say around five thousand is a good little backup bonus even a thousand or two thousand would be good depending on the number of fortifications you have know what you're doing and plan it out in the lobby as I said plan things out Having a team you can communicate with helps with that. If they're randoms, as long as they can respect that you're the engineer and it's your job to build and they don't you know, get involved and build stuff themselves, that's fine. Um, but if they start doing that, I would just leave the lobby. <clears throat> respect your teammates. Build stuff for them too. Heavies are often going to want weapon lockers to store salvos and other weapons on, as well as turrets if they're using the turret damage card so build stuff for your teammates moving on to the heavy class which we'll go ahead and swap over to it your three main cards are going to be explosive damage heavy weapon damage and explosive ammo the other two cards I would recommend is mark damage and for the fifth whatever else you prefer good choices are turret damage or pistol damage turret damage for harder difficulties pistol damage if you just want to use your pistol um, mortars kinda suck and they're not that useful unless you're playing on an open map like say uh, reclaimed <clears throat> there's only a few places enemies can hide in reclaimed in the buildings and that's usually because they spawn in there but if you give them time to come out of the buildings and be in the open you can drop mortars and you should get a couple good couple kills but I wouldn't really use the mortars anyway stay away from your enemies you can hurt yourself especially with perfect reloaded boom shots or salvos if you hit a wall while you're taking cover on it while with the salvo you can kill yourself the boom shot you can kill yourself aim high with the salvo the, el the salvo doesn't shoot exactly where you aim it aim it a little bit up and the rockets will kinda like not fly in the right direction I don't know it's kinda weird if you've used it before you'll know what I'm talking about don't perfect reload in close quarters that ties in with the first tip you can and will kill yourself perfect um, reloaded boom shot it does more damage and has more radius so you'll kill yourself even quicker I prefer relying on the bolt at close range it is an amazing pistol and you really should rely on it and also if you're running the pistol damage card that's gonna benefit even more use your ammo sparingly don't play like me using your explosives on every target save it for the big targets or groups if there's just like one shock tracker or one shepherd or something or whatever you call the little guys the um, the peacekeepers whatever they're called I call them shepherds because that's what the soldiers call out um, yeah don't be using up all your explosives on them the explosive ammo is kinda rare um, especially with other players grabbing the ammo packs you can use weapon lockers to restore your ammo of course but you have the risk of someone taking your gun so just use it sparingly if you use all your salvos you can buy more at a fabricator level 3 or higher for I think it's 6500 power so if you have a lot of power <clears throat> buy some weapon lockers buy some salvos throw them on the weapon lockers 
don't shoot the last shot. Seriously, I know it's tempting to just spray it, but don't use the last shot. If you're afraid you're going to use the last shot, then save like five shots. I don't know, just don't use them all. If you do, like I said, you can buy more. Also, do as many challenges as you as you can uh, without getting your team killed. The challenge crates usually suck, but you can get lucky and get salvo crates to drop like five or six of them in those big boys, so just throw them on the weapon lockers. Moving on, we have the scout. You're going to want to run fabricator deposit bonus, pickup range, movement speed, health boost, and health regen. Those are the five best cards for the scout if you're playing objectively. Fabricator deposit bonus is needed because it's your job to pick up the power <coughs> and depositing more is just awesome for your team. Pickup range gets up to, up to 500% so that's really going to help you out when it comes to picking up from a distance and stealing from greedy teammates who want to pick it up instead. Movement speed goes up to 33%. It's a godsend, trust me. The movement speed is so awesome that I've played the scout, and then the next game I'll play a different character, and without the speed boost I feel lost. Health boost, must have. I mean, who doesn't want to have more health? And health regeneration is important too, because if on the harder difficulties you do get hit, you want to take cover, and then the faster you regenerate, the better. The faster you can get back out on the field and do what you gotta do. <clears throat> Shotgun cards, they're not as useful on any difficulty past normal. If you want, right here on the screen, I have like a shotgun build just for having fun and murdering people. That's for like casual and normal. As you can notice, I don't have the pickup radius. I don't have the dep deposit bonus. I was just digging around. Um, you can use the shotgun cards if you really want, but if you're going to be playing the objective in hardcore or insane, you probably shouldn't be using the shotgun. Not only because it's a waste of a card slot, but you're not really going to be able to get close enough to the enemies to use the shotgun. You're going to get killed pretty quick. Pick up the power during the wave. You only get double pickups during the wave. Obviously, if you've been playing for a while, you'll know that, but I didn't know it at first. For hardcore and insane, if you're turret camping, if your whole team is sitting on turrets, make sure you leave one or a few enemies alive then uh, you as the scout you need to run out pick up all the power which should be easy with the speed boost and pickup radius pick up all the power return it and deposit it don't risk trying to do it alone during the wave don't run around like a maniac you're gonna die if you die your team will have to die trying to pick you up if they can't get to you and revive you they're gonna have to end the wave and if they end the wave you're losing out on all the possible double power pickups because Obviously then the wave ends, you get revived in the middle, like in the, in the intermission round, and then you have to go and pick up all the power, and you still get the deposit bonus, but it's a big, it's a big downside to not get the doubles. <coughs> Don't die, ties in with previous tip, you die and everything goes to shit. I mean, I guess if you die, it's not like the end of the world, but you really shouldn't. Try to be careful. Uh, deposit when you're done collecting. Don't leave your engineer hanging. Be his sugar daddy. Give him the money. After every wave, I recommend depositing. Again, like I said at the beginning, 50% of 50%, or 50% of a number is 50%. So, you know, you're getting you're getting the deposit bonus regardless. You don't have to save it up. If you want to like surprise the team, like if you're playing on casual and normal, you can save it up. I would say as long as they're not starved for power. But if they're if they're star like if they're not starved for power, that means someone else is picking it up and they shouldn't be. But um. You can hoard it a little bit if you want in the easier difficulties just for fun, but not too much. Like maybe five waves and then just throw like 30,000 at them. They'll be surprised. They'll be amazed. But it's not really anything to, to like be amazing about. I mean, it, it doesn't really make you a better scout to save up a lot of money. So just, just give it to them. Moving on to the sniper. You should be using headshot damage, rifle damage rifle ammo, marking more targets, and for the fifth card take either sniper strike or explosive headshots and maybe radar ping if you have a heavier two in your lobby running mark damage uh, because then you can ping every enemy on the map and then they'll do more damage to said targets maybe they can call in a mortar strike that'll do extra damage, I don't know you don't have to run the the radar ping but you can if you want to play more support and team like <clears throat> obviously stay back Snipers aren't meant to be in close range. Every gun counts for headshot damage. It's not just the snipers. Proof is in the pudding. It's right here. If you look, headshots do more damage based on the level of skill. It does not say snipers do more damage. Unlike 
the rifle damage, obviously only rifles are going to do more damage. But this is headshot damage in general. It does not say that it's only snipers. So, if you can't quick scope and an enemy gets close to you, I would recommend carrying a Retro Lancer. The Retro Lancer does really good at getting headshots. And with 100% extra headshot damage, you're going to be able to kill them pretty quick. So, if you're not the type of person to carry two snipers, just carry one sniper and carry a Retro Lancer. Or, you know, you can carry the Ball Talk too. And then if an enemy gets close, pull the ball talk or the retro lancer out and just, you know, get a headshot. Do what you gotta do. Don't try to quick scope. You'll probably die. Um, <clears throat> mark targets with the card that lets you mark more. The mark boost right here. You, um, you can mark more enemies. And that's going to not only benefit your team for seeing enemies, but it's going to benefit people or the heavies running the mark damage card so that um, they can do more damage to the mark targets. Work on the big guys first, you can kill whoever, but I find that the sniper's talent is best suited for dropping the big guys to keep them off your scouts and your soldiers, your heavies. Nobody likes a cross mapping boon chop, so you should drop them quick. If you have a long range or a long line of sight and you can drop that boom shot or the buzz kill or whatever before they can get close, please do it because trust me, as a soldier or a heavy, I know what it's like. For those guys to get close and I know it's like for them to freaking be launching boom shots across the map you're a sniper range is your excellence use it blow those heads off don't worry about the little guys they move too much they take cover too much the big guys are out in the open they're just asking to be headshot blow them up moving on to the soldier the last card or the last class um, your main three cards are air damage reload bonus and mag side or what no your main two cards my bad air damage and reload bonus um, for your other three cards you can use mag size, ammo capacity, and cover boost but you can switch those up if you want to use something else. If you don't care for having extra ammo you don't have to use those. Um, if you're gonna sacrifice one of the ammo cards I would recommend sacrificing the mag size. That one's not as useful um, as ammo capacity. I would definitely keep the ammo capacity though because I mean you're, that's double ammo. That's less times you need to run to the ammo box to pick up ammo. I would definitely keep that. Um, <clears throat> Hammer is a vile option too. The Hammer of Dawn, if you've got it leveled up pretty high, it's a really good card to use on um, really big rushes or boss waves. So definitely think of that as an option. Don't get too far from the enemies. Uh, ARs aren't very good at long range, obviously. The Lancer in particular is very bad at um, long range. It's okay at medium, but it's best at close. Uh, so is the Retro Lancer, it's best at close too. The Hammer Burst has some range to it, so you can use the Hammer Burst at range if you want to, but just kind of medium range yourself just make sure you're not getting too far from your teammates that way if you go down they can still reach you of course you probably shouldn't be going down maybe run cover boost if you die a lot I don't know um, get perfect reloads practice if you need to the perfect reloads especially with the reload boost card on are essential it's like super reload from Gears of War 3 if you guys remember that if you played Gears 3 you, it's, it's like it's must have extra damage you definitely want it focus on the little guys unlike the sniper you do fast rapid damage they do slow burst damage I find on the big rushes of enemies or boss waves mowing down the little guys first really helps the team to prevent you from getting you know overwhelmed so whenever I play the soldier I'll get a perfect reload and I'll just like mow down the little grubs while <coughs> my team focuses on it on other people you can attack the big guys in the boss but I would mow down the little guys first to keep them from rushing your team because if, you, if you've ever noticed when you're playing with bad players on the boss waves the boss will get close to you and push you guys back more and more and more and while you guys are trying to kill that boss notice all the little guys they're swarming around they're getting close to you they're throwing grenades at you they're hitting you with lancers and shotguns and they're just not being nice kill them you won't regret it I am always asked a lot about leveling up quickly Play harder modes. The harder the mode, the more XP. Also, get as many ribbons as you can. The more ribbons, the bigger the bonus. And also, I also always get asked, class XP. I don't care about leveling up my main class onion. You know, I want to level up my, my, or my main level. I want to level up my class. Okay, well, class XP is based on a percent of the total XP you get at the end of the game. So the more XP you get, the more your class gets. Now, I don't know what the exact percentage is. I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. I looked it up, I can't find it. I could have probably tweeted someone, but I can't find anything. <laughs> but 
if you think about it, that's the only logical explanation as to why the classes level up so slow. It's probably it's probably like 10 to 15 percent of the overall XP you make is converted down to class XP. So just like leveling up your main class just play harder difficulties really if you want to level up just play harder difficulties that's that's the guide if you want to get anywhere past seven if you want to get to ten and get that fifth card slot you're gonna want to play hardcore and insane a lot take bounties XP bounties are really important for casual your best bet is to use the specific one to fifty cards uh, the class cards as certain class bounties um, sorry I just tongue twisted myself um, the 1 to 50 as a certain class card, the one that like 1 to 50 is a soldier, 1 to 50 is a heavy, whatever, those give 50,000 here. I'll just show you guys. Those give, um, I do believe they give 50,000. Let me see. Here's, here's the 1 to 50 for any difficulty, which basically means casual. Because, I mean, you're not going to take that in a, on an insane match when you could take the insane card instead and get 75,000. So, say you're playing casual, 1 to 50 with this card gets you 30,000 but 1 to 50 as say a soldier will get you um, 50,000 so if you're playing casual take the class cards and not the difficulty cards however if you are playing on difficulty say normal hardcore insane these give you way more hardcore gives you 60,000 insane gives you 35,000 definitely take those they're way more worth it Earning credits, not as big of a deal because you basically just you, you play to get those. But you know I do get asked sometimes how to earn credits quickly. It's similar to XP really. Playing harder modes and using bounty cards is the best way. But don't use the credit cards. <coughs> use the XP ones, and here's why. Every five levels you get 500 credits. So the more you level up, the more credits you're gonna get. If you play an insane match with the 75,000 XP card on, you're going to get like 5 to 10 levels. That's 500 credits every 5 levels. You're going to get credits a lot quicker than if you were to take the credits. Um, because as you can see here, insane gives you 1,000 credits. So say you're level 80 or more, it might be more wise to take this card. Because then that's 10 levels worth of credits right there. So it might be more wise to take this one. But if you're a low level, anything below, I'd say, 70, you're going to get at least 10, 15, 20 levels per insane match. And that's 500 credits per. And the easier difficulties aren't worth it so much more. Hardcore is only 800. Casual is 500. And normal is 600. Now, by any means, not by any means are these bad cards. They do work. But I just, I feel like why not just take the XP ones? Not only are you getting more XP to level up quicker so you can re-up and whatnot, but you're getting credits for every 500 levels, or 5 levels, my bad. So why not? Again, you can take the credit ones if you really want, but in my opinion, the XP ones are better. Um, re-upping. Last thing. There's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be re-upping. There's no negatives at all, only positives. You get free emblems, you get free packs to open, and you can also re-level all over again. Which gives you the option to get those 500 credits every 5 levels again. 1 to 5, you only get like 100, but then 5 to 10, and so on and so forth. You get 500 credits every level again. And getting to like level 50 just takes a couple matches. <laughs> you can just hop into like 2 insane matches. You'll be level 50 in no time. That is really good for earning earning credits and earning cards. For this re-up, myself, I've not played any hardcore insane matches to 50. They've all been normal and casuals. And I have this many packs. I have 35 horde boosters and 4 operation packs and I still have some credits left. Because my goal, if you guys watch my live streams, you'll know my goal has been to level 1 to 100, re-up, and then open the elite packs, the operation packs, and the horde packs all in one massive video, and I still have that plan for you guys, I'm still going to do that. But my point is, I got most of these from those 500 credits every 5 levels, because I'm level like 69 now, I think? Yeah, 69, almost 70. When I hit 70, I'll get another 500, and then uh, 75... 
80, 85, 90, 95, 100, that's 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, that's another 3,000 credits I can still make just from leveling alone. If we do the math, let's see, it's 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30, I don't even want to do all the math, but that's like 10,000, actually, yeah, it is pretty much 10,000 credits. 5 times 10, 5 times 10, I don't know, it's, it's a lot of credits. I don't need to get into the math to prove to you guys. It's a lot of fucking credits. So, you definitely want to re-up. There's no reason you shouldn't be re-upping, because every 5 levels you're getting those credits. And if you want credits, that's your best way to do it. Again, you can rock with the bounty cards if you really want. They're not bad by any means. If you don't, if you don't care for XP and you just want to get the bounty cards, fine. But everything works, you know. Gaining XP essentially gets you credits, levels you up at the same time. And remember, if you're trying to level up your classes, class XP again, it's based on a percentage of the total XP you get. So if you run with the XP card, not only you're leveling up your big level to get more credits but you're leveling up your class level it's a win-win situation that's all i'm gonna say anyway that's it for this video thank you guys for watching hope it helped if you enjoyed it and you're not subscribed yet please consider subscribing i'd really appreciate it and if you enjoyed it please drop a like it really helps me out i don't get any money for it or anything but it makes me feel good and it lets me know that you guys liked the video so if you liked it please drop a like and I really appreciate it. If you didn't like it, you can drop a dislike too, but I don't see why you wouldn't like it. I guess you're a hater. I don't know. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Peace.